everyone, and welcome to another episode of Business in Hawaii. My name is Kevin Lai, and we are broadcasting live from the ThinkTech studios in downtown Honolulu. Today, we will be addressing one aspect of the 2019 HealthSpan Hawaii Summit, sponsored by the Regenerative Medicine Association of Hawaii. Nobel laureate Mario Capecchi was the keynote speaker, and the exciting meeting combined reports about new medical technologies and encouraging the idea of health travel beyond that of typical medical tourism to further diversify the economy of the state of Hawaii. Can we establish Hawaii as a place to come, to be treated, to bring one's family, and to stay for recovery thereafter? Does Hawaii have what it takes to achieve this goal? We have identified two clinicians in Hawaii with indelible interest in different aspects of rejuvenative medicine who have plenty to say about this. In the studio today is Dr. Melanie Tantasira, founder of the True Vision Center in Honolulu. Dr. Tantasira is a graduate of the John A. Burns School of Medicine, is a board-certified ophthalmologist, and is now an innovative entrepreneur maintaining an active practice in Honolulu while focusing on oculoplastic surgery. She also serves as an assistant clinical professor at JABSM. Welcome, Dr. Tantasira. Thank you. Dr. Tantasira, what is new in cosmetic technology in Hawaii these days? Oh, we have quite a few techniques that we're applying into cosmetic medicine. And um, the, for example, we have some medications that last longer. These are very new, and obviously anything that lasts longer is better for the patient. Um, we can customize treatments to each individual patient, therefore allowing access to a broader range of patients, and that's wonderful for them. We also have medications that are created by recombinant DNA therapy treatments, and um, we even use uh, PRP, which is platelet-rich plasma, which is a component of each patient's blood. It's been used in other areas of medicine, but now it's in cosmetic medicine, and so that will help patients heal faster. Super. Is there anything else that comes to mind? Anything else that comes to mind? Um, well, those are the main ones that are in my mind. Uh, are you thinking of anything specific? I understand there's some treatments that could almost make a patient look as if they had had a smartphone filter applied to them. Oh, sure. That's when we use the very customized treatments. Um, we use therapies that we've already been doing, and we apply them to each patient as an individual. Um, we want to make them look more like themselves, kind of better. So they bring in what they want to look like, and we create it for them. So that's what I mean by very customized. Sure. Yeah, we can do that, definitely. What about the age ranges of some of the patients these days? Yeah, okay, this is very interesting. Um, we're starting to see both younger patients and older patients. It used to be that when we thought about who would come in for treatments, it would be kind of like this middle age. You know, we thought people who were in their 40s and 50s. And we used to think it was females. Um, now I'm seeing patients come in in their 20s. They want to prevent um, any damage. They never want to see a wrinkle on their face. They never want to look older. They want to look the same as they do right then because they look fantastic. So they'll start treatment really, really early and they'll never get any damage save like a frown line. Here in Hawaii, we have a lot of squinting. They won't ever develop lines from squinting in the sun. And so they'll never have to erase it later. Uh, I also have patients at the other end. I have patients coming in in their 70s. Even I had a patient in her 90s. She knew exactly what she wanted, came in and fixed the problem that she wanted without surgery. It sounds like you're pretty keen on preventative treatments as well. Oh, definitely. Yeah. The primary preventative thing I have every patient on right away is sunscreen. Because <laughs> our sun is not a friend to your, to your look or to your skin cancers. Fantastic. Uh, what can you tell us what you mentioned about using old technologies today, some chemicals or whatnot? Well, um, we do have um, fillers. Okay, fillers have been around for quite a long time. What we do with fillers is they take up volume, okay? Um, old style with fillers was we'd fill a space, but you have a smile line, fill it up, and it looks better. Uh, now we use it to place it in higher spots and because most of the lines are created by gravity pulling down on the face. So now we'll place it higher and lift the face, and that erases the lines just as well, but it looks more natural. So that's kind of old technology. However, we have newer fillers, which now last a long time. We have studies showing that the newest filler lasts five years, going on 10 years, 
and with the type of technology that's involved in it, um, I see no reason why it wouldn't last for the rest of the patient's life, which is great. Because sure. nor right now, most of the fillers we have have to be replaced every four months to maybe two years. So a true advantage for the patients. Yes, the patients love it. If they don't have to come in every one to two years, they're going to be really, really happy. I know you mentioned PRP earlier. Can you tell us a bit more about that, how it's made and how it's used? Sure. Okay, so PRP stands for platelet-rich plasma. Okay, so platelets are the cells that stop bleeding when there's an injury. And because they're rushing to injuries, they bring along growth factors. So the, that will help with healing the injuries. So when we take it and make it rich in the plasma, so platelet-rich plasma, we enrich the plasma with platelets, then we're going to have a high concentration of platelets and growth factors. And the way we create that is we draw some blood, and then we concentrate the platelets within the blood by um, using a centrifuge and concentrating that. And then when we use that, we can promote healing and we can make it faster in patients in any procedure that we're going to do. So PRP has been used in other areas of medicine and it's kind of new to cosmetic medicine. We have many different techniques that we use PRP in cosmetic medicine. I understand it can also be used for areas such as hair loss or for hair regrowth. What can you tell us about that? Yes, we do use that. Um, in male and female balding, it is felt that the hair follicles are somewhat damaged. And so by injecting it into the areas of hair loss, we are able to help repair those follicles. And then we see regrowth of hair after a few treatments. So, yeah, it's a great area because given the side effects of having hair transplants, if we can get growth of hair with just these simple treatments, which are relatively non-invasive and are much shorter, then that's a great advantage to the patients as well. Great. I understand that we may have some video of such a procedure. Yes, I did bring a video. That would be very nice. Okay, so I'm meeting a patient here. She's only 27 years old. Um, this is my assistant who's prepping the patient and she will be drawing some blood. You can see we use a very tiny needle and um, she will be drawing a small amount of blood. So this patient suddenly had hair loss about a year ago and it's quite severe, it causes her great distress. So we're drawing one tube of blood. In this case, it's about a teaspoon. If we need more, we can draw more than one tube. Okay, so it's easily drawn, just like giving blood at the lab. Then we're going to place this tube in the centrifuge. Our centrifuge is able to separate the blood components within seven minutes. And then when you take out the tube, you're going to be able to see the separation. The red blood cells are going to be at the bottom of the tube, which is the outside of the centrifuge. And the top part has that golden fluid, which is the plasma in the platelet. And so now my assistant is going to withdraw the plasma through a long needle into the syringe. And you can see how the blood cells are at the very bottom, but the plasma is at the top. So once she gets it into the syringe, I can use it for any number of different methods. And in this case, because we're doing hair loss treatment, I'm going to place a tiny needle on the end. And here I'm prepping the treatment site. I'm using alcohol. I'm using a very strong alcohol to make sure it's disinfectant. Okay, so once I disinfect the area, I have this tiny needle, and I'm just gonna place small amounts all along the areas of hair loss. Okay, so you can see it's a very small needle, and it doesn't cause any pain or discomfort. There's very little, if any, bleeding. And I'm just going right along to her part because her hair is quite thin along that area. And I will just place it over her entire head. The treatment took maybe 15 minutes. Here is the top of her head, the crown, where there's really significant thinning. There's almost no hair growth in this area. It's finishing up. A little bit of oozing is stopped by pressure. And you can see that we're finishing up. Okay, clean up the area. And that's all there is to it. Okay. And then so the patient sits up, she's doing great, looking forward to having more hair in a few months.
Thank you, Dr. Tantasir. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. I think we're going to take a quick break now for just a minute or two, and we'll be back with Business in Hawaii in just a moment. Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, host of Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. My show is based on my book, also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about creating a superior culture of excellence, leadership, and finding greatness. I interview guests who are successful in business, sports, and life, which is sure to inspire you in finding your greatness. Join me every Monday as we go Beyond the Lines at 11 a.m. Aloha. Aloha, I'm Wendy Lowe, and I'm coming to you every other Tuesday at 2 o'clock, live from Think Tech Hawaii. And on our show, we talk about taking your health back. And what does that mean? It means mind, body, and soul. Anything you can do that makes your body healthier and happier is what we're going to be talking about. Whether it's spiritual health, mental health, fascia health, beautiful smile health, whatever it means, let's take healthy back. Aloha. Welcome back to this episode of Business in Hawaii and our discussion about how cosmetic and rejuvenative medicine could spark a new wave of health travel to Hawaii. My name is Kevin Lai. Let's continue our conversation today. And we're going to hop over to Dr. Nat Ehrlich, who is joining us today from his clinic in Makawao, Maui. Dr. Ehrlich, thank Aloha. you again for making the time to join us today. I wonder if you could share with us sure, a little bit about your practice and tell us about some of the procedures that you use to treat your patients. Okay. Well, I've been in practice in uh, Maui since 1988 with my area of specialization, physical medicine and non-surgical orthopedic uh, procedures, uh, uh, prolotherapy, probably around 2003. Uh, prolotherapy is a system of injection regenerative techniques that use primarily uh, higher concentrations of dextrose, which is sugar, to help remodel and repair damaged connections such as ten. Um, to that also, uh, PRP is one of the modalities I use that we uh, you just heard about. Um, I use some cell-based therapies that are derived from autologous fat and bone marrow, as well as neural prolotherapy, and I use ultrasound guidance uh, to both visualize in real time and guide my placement of the injections. Got it. Thank you, Nat. I wonder, I understand that you were at the Health Span Hawaii Summit and you were able to hear from uh, Nobel laureate Mario Capecchi, who shared the 2000 pri 2007 prize for physiology or medicine for his discoveries of principles for introducing specific gene modifications to mice. What did you garner from Dr. Capecchi or from the summit itself? Well, uh, uh, Dr. Capecchi was great. I think um, he uh, is on to a new uh, horizon tier of medicine where, uh, you know, we can start to look at uh, gene modification in this particular situation was really interesting with um, anxiety and obsessive compulsive disorders. Uh, as everybody probably knows, anxiety disorders are becoming increasingly a problem in the American population, especially in women. And uh, to see that there's a future in being able to get into the gene aspect of it and help control it was really promising. Fantastic. Thank you. Well, as you know, there was a clear push during the HealthSpan Hawaii Summit to address the concept of promoting health travel to Hawaii. And there was a specific track dedicated to that process. And I think that we may have a slide that displays what we call the continuum of care for health travel. And there are a number of steps that are involved there, and just a few of them are the actual medical and clinical treatment side of things, which clinicians such as yourself and Dr. Tantasira would focus. But it's important to realize that there is a large number of other aspects of providing a suitable, safe, friendly place for different patients and their families to come to be treated. I wonder if you could tell us a little bit about what you think it would take for Hawaii to become a leader in international health travel. Well, as a destination, uh, it's pretty easy to see all the benefits that we enjoy here um, as residents of Hawaii. Um, the lifestyle, the year-round sun, and access to fresh water and fresh air, not fresh produce that's actually 
you know, grown here, like papayas and all, all the good keeps us healthy, which is a big part of our recovery in a lot of these regenerative procedures is remember, uh, for example, a lot of the techniques I use are autologous, meaning uh, we're drawing and biologics from our own bodies or say from the body of the patient that's being treated. And in that milieu that you're drawing from, you're drawing cells and proteins representing the health of that particular individual. So it's really important, uh, no matter what, whether we're recovering or preparing or just in general to maintain a uh, very healthy status. Um, Hawaii is one of the uh, best states in the country to be able to offer that type of life. So it's not hard to be able to imagine people wanting to uh, seek Hawaii as a destination. It's just a matter of able to, to accommodate their needs as uh, whatever procedures that they underwent would um, require of them. I do a lot of ortho work and typically after the given inflammatory after the procedure, there's some downtime. Uh, and then after, you know, a week or so, they can begin to engage in some light, uh, whether it's uh, weight resistance or swimming, um, they can begin to rehabilitate and what better place than Hawaii for their families to come down, enjoy a vacation while they give support to their family member that's you know undergoing these procedures that we're doing. Sure. Let me turn back to Dr. Tantasir now for a moment. Uh, what are your thoughts on the vision of markedly increasing and promoting Hawaii as a place for health travel? Well, I think it's a great place to market and we have all the infrastructure in place. So we, you know, we have already the tourism base and we have experience with taking care of the kind of a luxury market because medi medical tourism is relatively expensive. We also have great clinicians. We ha can offer cosmetic services in the broad gamut from very simple procedures to total body makeovers. Um, and I do agree about the environment being a large part of the healing mechanism. So we have everything in place. I think it would be a great place and a great industry to access. Um, maybe it will take a, some kind of coordination. We may need a medical tourism board in order to make that happen. But I do think it would be very popular and wonderful for the patients. I, I mean, many people dream of coming to Hawaii just once in their lifetime. Uh, I've talked to those people. And if they can also have a procedure done that they want or need, then what better place to come than to come here? Right on. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Now, Dr. Ehrlich, I know you mentioned that some of your work is dealing with uh, orthopedics and uh, those types of procedures. Could you tell us a little bit more about that and perhaps how the environment of Hawaii could be beneficial for your patients? Well, uh, is attractive to a lot of people worldwide because of the lifestyle. We, have a, we can boast of a very lifestyle that Hawaii can offer, whether it's on water or sports. Um, and as a result, people uh, tend to uh, seek out practitioners that are doing regenerative procedures. Um, in the world of orthopedics and uh, regenerative medicine, it, it's, uh, it makes sense to a lot of people who are very active if they incur an injury that a prudent approach to their recovery would be instead of just jumping right into surgery, that they do try something which would be more natural, basically trying to harness the body's own ability to heal itself and utilize factors, for example, PRP, and then um, stimulate the body itself. In most cases, especially with osteoarthritis and degenerative joint disease, these um, conditions aren't necessarily emergency conditions for surgery, uh, it is prudent to try something that won't hurt the patient, such as PRP or some of these therapies, autotherapy, uh, especially when they're autologous, meaning that the cells are being generated from that patient. When uh, these conditions are met and it's, and it's not, not in have immediate surgery, uh, the worst I can see is that those particular procedures won't 
completely offer the 100% recovery. And then in the long run, surgery waits for that patient. But in the best case scenarios, and it happens often in my experience is that surgery can be averted. So for people that are very active, um, you know, this, this is actually very attractive. I think that we'll be seeing uh, a greater uh, degree of numbers of practitioners uh, that are practicing regenerative medicine. And for sure, um, in the future, this will be the future of medicine. Certainly. Now, I'll toss this out to either of you. Are there any regulatory issues or concerns that patients should be aware about when dealing and seeking regenerative or even rejuvenative medical procedures? Um, I don't see any new regulatory issues. Um, some of this therapy is not necessarily regulated as it's new and it falls under the practice of medicine. Um, the, for example, the PRP is not an quote, FDA approved uh, treatment, but it is something that has been used over and over over the years in orthopedics, as Dr. Ehrlich has mentioned, and in dental procedures. So there is a standard of care that has been established, and it's actually becoming quite common in cosmetic treatments. So that's not something that is regulated by the FDA. It becomes something that is standard of care within the practice, and that is still not, it's certainly not disapproved by the FDA. And no, no regulatory issues are known in that particular treatment. And thank you. And Dr. Ehrlich, I know you may have done some additional research about this. Has anything else come to mind? Well, uh, you know, the field is broad and there's a lot of um, talk these days about cells. Um, stem cells are uh, being uh, heralded now for treatment and cure of a lot of conditions. My practice tends to focus almost entirely in orthopedic work. And so I don't treat uh, a lot of general medical conditions with a lot of the biologics that are, um, that I previously mentioned. Um, for the majority of my cases, I use PRP and PRP is great. Um, if you go to my website, drnat.com slash ND. There's a section on all the research and articles that I've amassed there, and it's organized by areas of the body. PRP, I think it's safe to say, is fairly well accepted, even though it's not yet entirely FDA approved. There's so many studies that, that show the efficacy of that particular care that uh, I don't think that one's falling into question. Um, some question regarding uh, cell therapies, and for the most part, um, the FDA is looking in the position that that I'm understanding that they're taking as of, you know, a week or so ago is that if you take uh, you take, take either bone marrow or you take fat out of the body, it must be minimum at the best minimally manipulated. So when you begin to add other agents or culture that particular milieu then you're going to start to enter into an area where the is going to call that, you know, autologous product, um, a drug. And once it becomes a drug, then it needs to comply with a whole uh, host of different types of uh, uh, requirements that the FDA has. And so that's not an area that I really get at this point. Um, I, I'm going to see what happens. There's other countries that are way um, I would say more advanced in this world of these types of cell cellular treatments, and that's because they have a federal or FDA type regulation imposed upon them. So you hear of a lot of um, American citizens going abroad to get these treatments, and um, a lot of it is is pretty good. I mean, from what I've seen and from what I've uh, empirically observed, uh, most of these patients that are going abroad to get them, they're paying a lot, but they're getting good results with it. So, yeah, I'm I'm gonna wait and see how this uh, plays out. Uh, like I said, the PRPs for me is is an area that I've been doing since 2010, and I've not seen any kind of problems with it at all. Only really great results, and um, in the more 
practice cases where somebody's really back up against the wall, potentially facing surgery, and they're going to need some kind of cellular therapy, then uh, I'll go with bone marrow in those kind of situations. But I'm not really doing any kind of uh, C concoctions with that. It's just extracting the bone marrow and then acting. Okay. All right, thank you. Well, in the few minutes that we have left, let's turn back to a couple of exciting therapies that patients might be able to uh, have when they would come to Hawaii for treatments in the future. Uh, Dr. Tendasir, can you tell us a little bit about lasers? Lasers? Sure. I love talking about lasers. Um, yes, I do skin lasers, which is for rejuvenation or making the skin look younger. Um, my favorite one is a CO2 because it goes deep and creates a lot of change and rejuvenates very, very well. Um, so it goes down to the dermis, which is a deepest layer of the skin, and it creates a lot of cellular activity. That's where most of the rejuvenation can occur. Um, so I actually combine it with PRP treatment because immediately after the treatment, there are openings from the surface of the skin down to the dermal layer, intact skin in between so it heal, heals, excuse me, fast. And then when we add the PRP, it just kind of, it, it, the PRP is just absorbed into this dermis and the growth factors can go to work. It heals faster that way. Um, more collagen is developed, and the more collagen that's developed, the thicker the skin is. The fine lines go away because the skin is so thick. Um, the medium wrinkles are improved, and patients just love their new skin, and they tell me, oh, my skin is as smooth as a baby's bottom. <laughs> Sounds kind of crazy, but that's the way it is. <laughs> and just very briefly, can you tell us a little bit about the use of needles or microneedles? Okay, yes, microneedles, um, they sort of create the same sort of um, activity, but without, without the amount of trauma a laser does. So they also will pierce the skin. We use hundreds of little needles on a device that then goes all over the entire face. Um, in the office, we can go deeper, and of course, we maintain sterile technique. We can numb the patient, so we can do a slightly more aggressive treatment. Also, we now, of guys doing PRP because again it can help with the healing and it does something similar to the laser just not quite as much. All right, yes. thank you. Well with that uh, appears to be almost all the time available for this edition of Business in Hawaii on ThinkTech. I would like to thank our esteemed guests Dr. Melanie Tantasira and you. Dr. Nat Ehrlich for joining us today and providing their thank candid you. commentaries. So my name is Kevin Lai on behalf of Guild Consulting. I would like to thank each of you as well for watching this episode of Business in Hawaii and learning about the potential role of cosmetic and rejuvenative medicine in the future of health travel to Hawaii. Let us know what you think. Aloha.